Hi, in this tutorial today, I'm gonna, it's the second tutorial in the same day. I just made a low poly terrain tutorial, and then in the comments in YouTube, a suggestion came in, like I could even make it a lower poly. So I just decided to make the video over again. This is the second take on that video. So we're gonna make a terrain kind of like you see here in the background, that's low poly, right? You can see the polygons, you can see the faceted faces. So here in Blender, that's the one that um, was made. All right, and then, we're gonna make one over again. Okay, so let's start off with new, a new Blender project. I could just delete everything that's here right now because I'm gonna be bringing it into Unity. So I deleted the camera and the light. And then the first thing I'll do is I'll add in a grid from the mesh grid. And the mesh grid, you're, here's the little um, panel for it. I could control the size over here. So I could make it bigger, like say 50. And let's view it in wireframe mode so you can see the, the, um, the subdivisions of the grid. So the more subdivisions I put in, um, the more detailed the low poly terrain will be. So I'm going to put in 50 by 50, okay? Or maybe even, I'm going to say um, 100 by 100 because I'm going to do something afterward that will reduce the amount of polygons after I do the terrain. All right, so I have the terrain here. Now I'm going to go into edit mode with the... Um, the grid selected and what I'll do is I'll show you that I could just pick some points and then I could raise them up all right and the thing is like right here the points getting raised up and you can see that it's just picking up that point and nothing else around it or I could use the proportional editing tool which here when you look in the move here's the proportional editing checkbox so I could check that and now there'll be an effect um, to smoothly edit what's around it. Um, let's see, so I could play around with that and say that, you see as I increase the proportional size, it affects the points around it more, all right? Um, then I could pick, um, another way I could pick some points is with the select circle. And with the select circle, that's the one I kind of liked better because then it, it kind of makes like plateaus. And then I could, again, choose to move and let me turn on the proportional landing tool here okay and also let me choose um a different type instead of smooth let me pick the random all right and now when i pull up you can see that it has the plateau and then some random jagged edges around it and i could reduce that if i wanted to or increase it but the, the, the cool thing is I, I could basically play around with that that editing shape right so say i have it like this and then let me pull it up a little bit more. And now I'll do the random to give it more something like that. All right, so there you go. I got like a kind of canyon cliff there. And this one, I, I don't like it really. So let me just put it back down. Ooh, I still got the proportional editing on. Let me turn that off. Pick that point. Let me go back to the selection box. Select it, select it. It's very hard. There, I got it. And then use the move. Let me put this back down because that's really messing up my view. So I have this plateau and then maybe I could have some other little mountains just picking some random points here and there. And then uh, use the proportional again. And first let me start off with the sharp. I like the sharp and pull this up. And you see it's like it has some waves there. This influence thing is, is really, really big. Let me shrink it down so I could have more like some little hill points there. All right. And that is that effect. Then let me do the random again too, just to make it look more rocky. All right, so um, you got some spikes and then you got this big plateau, you got a hill. All right, I have these things here now. Um, oh, I guess I could also kind of make like a river. So if I wanted to make like a river, let me go back to the select circle. Uh, let's say the river comes from over here. It winds around through these rocks and just makes its way around over here like this, okay? Then again, it's just using the move tool. I have the proportional editing on. Um, with this one, I'm gonna, I'm going to, I guess I'll leave it on. Um, I like the random, it's more natural looking. And I'll pull it down, but you see it's like the effect is too wide. So let me just shrink that random effect. So just right around the river's edge, I have like the jaggies. Okay, in the river, it's, it's a pull down. That's where the water's coming through. All right, so that's great. I have the shape of this terrain. 
and I should texture it. So let me go to UV editing. And here, this is an edit mode. I'll pick to face select mode. And let's view textures, materials. Let's, let's do the material properties and let's add a new material for this mesh. So I'll press the new button. And then here, I'll say that I'm gonna load an image texture for the, for the material. So it's gonna load an image texture. And now here I just open up the image I wanna use. So I'm gonna open it up and I know that on my computer, I have it on my desktop, this Blender JPEG. And it kind of maps out the picture to the grid. Um, over here, the picture didn't load though. So let me just open up the picture here on this tab here. And uh, desktop, Blender, JPEG. Okay, so let's see. You see all these little squares and where the picture is coming from here. That's UV mapping. So let's just over here on this side, press A to select all the faces. And now you can see all the faces over here. And then um, on this side, I'll click and then I'll press A to select all the UV mappings and I'm gonna zoom them down to the size of one of these blocks here, one of my color palette blocks or smaller. So now that I scaled it down, let me move it over to different colors and you can see if I move it over blue, then here it's blue. If I move it over green or red, then it'll be that color. So let's, let me get the basic color that most of the stuff is gonna be is green grass. So I'll pick that green now it's kind of highlighted, so I, I just want to get the idea of what it really looks like. So let me just click and see if I like that green. All right, no, so I press A again, and let me just get a more natural looking green. Okay, so whatever, I pick a green, right? Now you're gonna wonder, how am I gonna color the hills and stuff? Hmm, how am I gonna select all these faces? I'm just gonna do this, select it on the side, like that, okay? And zoom out. Um, here at the bottom, where it's the water, I will just select these faces here. And you can see from my viewpoint, it looks like I selected everything, but I didn't. So that's because I have to turn on the X-ray mode. So let me just view from the side again, turn on the X-ray mode, and then select those faces down here at the bottom that are going to be like my water. And the water is blue, so let me move this over to a blue shade like that. And now see, oops, something like that. And for some reason, these didn't get selected, so I could just do it again. Yeah, you kind of noticed those weren't selected from this view. So x-ray mode's on, a little bit higher. And it's just like an, an easy way to start selecting al almost all the stuff. And now, okay, those are blue. And these faces over here, they're still green. So I'm going to move them over. Oops, that stretched out a little. Make sure I had just this selected. And what the heck? All right, click. Select this only and move the, uh, why is it doing that? Oh, it must be one of the faces in here. <sighs> Okay, I have this all selected. Let me just do this. Light map pack. Okay. Bam. Now I got that. Okay, now select all of those and scale these guys down. Oops. Scale, 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 scale. And move into the blue that I'm choosing for the water. Scale down a little more to make it fit in there nicer. Could zoom in with the mouse wheel. There, it's in the blue. Now let's see how that looks. I got green and I got blue. Okay. Now Let's start trying to do these mountains. So once again, I'll go into the side view and let's see these little tips over here, these little spiky mountains over here. Um, so let me select them like this. I still have the x-ray on. And let's see, what color should I make the mountain? These little spiky mountain things. I can make them like a brown, some type of brown, let's see. Okay, like this brown, like this here. It's hard to see because the color is the same, but there it is, that's brown. And then on the tips, ooh, just to make it different for the tips, I select just the tips of them and I'll move that into the white, just for the fun of it. And I got those and I didn't, I didn't get these two mountains over here. All right, so let me just set the view like this. X, all right, do it again, just to get these mountains there. And I may get those over again, it's okay. So what did I do first? Um, A, it looks like I have selections coming around from different things here. UV editing, light map pack, all right. Then scale it down, scale to fit into one of the cubes. And move it over into that, into a brown again. I don't know if this was the brown. 
And let me just select the spiky tops of it and make those white. So now that I get them, yeah. And I guess it would get more complicated if I had them going all around, but this this worked. All right, for that. Now for this, this main, um, I don't know what you're going to call it, plateau. So I select it from the side view. Hmm, this mountain's going to get... It's going to get in the selection by accident. Yeah. How about this view here? That mountain still is going to get in there, but... All right, let's see. So I could select all of this plateau. And... Like that. I'm still in the x-ray mode up here. And let's make these... Let me just do this light map pack thing and get them all together. Let's make these grid things certain color after I scale it down. Okay, then I use the move tool to move it over a color. And let's make those rocks. Let's pick another color like this one maybe. Or maybe more reddish. I don't know. Okay. Then there. And then just the tops of them. Tops of them right there. I'm gonna change that color just to be different. And I'll change it to like a gray. All right, so the top is gray. So I got a scene. I colored it up. Now let me just go back to modeling mode to see everything and put it on with the colors there and just view it in object mode so I could see it. So I have a terrain. I wonder how many um, faces and vertices this has. Well, in Blender, I could just go over here, select this thing here, and then see the statistics. And now, right now, it says I have like 20,000 triangles. So, I think I could even make this more low poly than that. And this is the thing that was thanks to the person that put the YouTube comment. I've come to this level here, I'm at this point, but now with a modifier, I'll add a modifier with the mesh selected, I'll add a modifier for decimate. And decimate, it basically is going to put faces together where the angle is not that different. So with the collapse method, this is at 100%, which is 20,000 triangles. I'll just click my mouse and drag this down and see how the triangles kind of like reduce down. This is with the collapse method, all right? And now there's only 1,000 instead of 20,000. Now, the further down I go, the more degraded the appearance is. So that was the collapse method and how that one looks. But there's other methods here. Let's put the, unsub the unsubdivide method. Let's see if that one holds up a little bit better. Unsubdivide, and it goes through iterations. One, I may have to do texturing over again with this one. Two, kind of looks smoother. And three, but this one, it can't, I'll have to just retexture everything, but then I'm kind of like losing too many details with the subdivide. So let me try planner. And this seems to be joining faces together by the angle. All right, and here it is telling me the face count. So angle limit is five degrees. And as I increase the angle limit, oh, computer's like choking. I think collapse was the best one. So let me go back to the collapse method and see this is the full. And as I go down to about this, it looks nice and this, the, um, I like it. I like this collapse method better. It really does have that low poly look to me. So now I could just file, export this FBX. Um, I'll export it to my desktop. Um, I just need the mesh. I'm gonna apply transforms. This is uh, something to do for bringing it into Unity. And now I'll just name it here, my desktop. I'll name it my lower poly terrain FBX, right? And I'll say export, bam. And I guess I'll also save the Blender file for you guys and girls. So I'll say save for the Blender file and I'll call this lower poly terrain as well. Put this on my desktop, lower poly terrain and save the Blender file. All right, so I could close that and now I could go into Unity and here I have like a new scene. So this is how we're gonna bring it into Unity. First, we're gonna need the um, texture that we were using. So this is the texture. Let me drag and drop that in Unity. And then here's the terrain, the FBX file, lower poly terrain. I'll drag and drop that into Unity. And um, I dragged in the texture first and then the mesh. But if I drag the mesh in first, let me make these things bigger here. And let's make this full screen. If I had dragged the mesh in first, then you would see that the mesh would be there, but it wouldn't have any of the colors on it. 
So the fact that the texture is there in the same folder as the mesh, it, as the FBX, it shows the textures. But if I, let me see, if I just had removed this um, texture thing, then you're going to see that this doesn't have the colors with it. So just make sure I bring the texture in. Okay, so that's one thing, to bring the texture in with the um, mesh, have it in the same folder level. Um, the other thing here is to make a material from this texture and then assign that material to here. All right, so I'm going to do that extra step. So let me just make a material. My easy way is I just cheat. I just kind of put a cube in there and I just drag and drop the texture on the cube. Bam. So now it made a materials folder and it has a material here. So now I pick the mesh, the FBX file, and over here I could pick that material that it just made, Blender, and I could say apply. And now I, I see this. So now that it's a material and it's applied, I can get rid of this cube. I just used it to make the um, material for me nice and easy. Whoops, let's save this scene, the sample scene. Yes. All right, let's drag and drop this into the scene. Okay, and I guess let me just set it to transform at the reset all the position there. All right, so I got this in the scene. It's forward facing that way. I like this view. And um, so since I made a material, now I could play around with some of the features, you know, like the metallicness, you know, or the smoothness, like how shiny it is. I think it shouldn't be shiny, so I'm going to turn it down. Now I can play around with these features and and the other features that are there, since it's a Unity material. Okay. So now that's in there, but if I was going to use this in a game, um, let's see, let's say that uh, there's some object that we're going to put in here. This time I'll add in a, I'll add a sphere in again, like I did in the other tutorial. I'll just pick it up into the air a little, and I'll add a rigid body to it. Physics, a rigid body. All right. And then I could, let me set the camera to this view, Control shift f And let's keep an eye on this ball here and see what happens when I press play. It should, I want it to drop and bounce on the terrain. And it's dropping and it's going right through the terrain. Okay, that's, that's fine. And I think this view would be better. The reason it's doing that is because to my low poly terrain mesh, I need to add a collider. So add component, physics, mesh collider, it's going to have to be. So it could like outline directly with the mesh. Okay, and don't click convex. If you click convex, then it's gonna make a collider that kinda gif wraps your whole mesh and it's not gonna interact with the individual faces. So you add a mesh collider, but don't click convex. Then I'm gonna press play. Now we should see the ball. Yep, rolls and interacts with the terrain. So I made a low poly terrain and it has collision detection and I'm using it in Unity. And where's the ball going? Bye. There goes the ball.